Welcome back for another episode of Building the Nantahala Retreat. Today we're going to finish installing the soffit and fascia, finish installing the windows, and attempt to shake a tube of caulk with a sawzall. Can I get a work? We might need to clean my truck. <laughs> no. <way. laughs> hey. uh, we got a little. <laughs> Get a towel. So we actually made an improved version of the caulk shaker that worked later. Let's get going, and I want to give a special thanks again to LP for the trim products they provided for this video. So something interesting is that Jamie's he's tacking a lot of these framing parts in with. The 15 gauge, right? Yeah, it's a really easy way to get stuff like just positioned, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, you know, they're not the strongest thing in the world, but they can very easily attach something in place and then you can put screws or right. big nails in it. Yeah, and you can tap and beat it around. There's a little room for adjustment until you're ready to really stick it for, right. for good. Yep. To give our porch girders a cleaner, more hefty, and finished appearance, we decided to pack them out to the width of our porch posts, which is five and a half inches, and then wrap the entire outside in our LP smart side trim, and we're using one by 12 trim boards here. We use these temporary scabs to hold our boards in place and level with one another while we attach them. With the soffit and fascia now all wrapped up, it was time to install the rest of the windows so we could get going for siding. And of course, there's lots of good stuff I can tell you about windows. You may notice that some of the windows in this house are horizontal sliders, like these ones, some are double hung windows, and some other ones are fixed pane that don't open at all. We did it this way to minimize the cost of the window package, but also to maximize the amount of glass in each opening that has a big long range view here. Take one. Show them how you're angling away there and not hitting the window. Yeah. <laughs> With the That was a good one for the camera. Thank you. <laughs> We're angling the nails away from the window frame so that they catch in the meat of the framing behind the flange better. If you angle them down or towards the window frame, sometimes they can skip out on the inside of the rough opening and not catch anything at all. The reason we're not using a coil nailer here is that I've had lots of bad experiences of blowing these vinyl flanges to pieces with a pneumatic nailer. I will say that installing vinyl window frames like this in cold temperatures is a lot more stressful because the material becomes a lot more brittle when it's cold. So if you do mess up and smack the frame with your hammer and it's freezing cold, it's probably going to break it. Vinyl windows like this are much less expensive than a wood window with aluminum cladding, but they actually have one big advantage and that's that water won't really hurt them. So during the construction phase, if you don't have your permanent roof on, you don't really have to worry about installing vinyl windows, whereas a wood window could really get ruined with enough moisture during the construction phase. We're not using any casement windows on this job, and that's the type you crank out with a little handle, and we don't have anything against them. They're just expensive, about double the cost of a double hung, and about triple the cost of a slider window of the same size. So I'm, I'm keeping this nice and clean here with just my T25 screws. I'm not gonna have to mix, ooh, I just mixed it. <laughs> I'm not gonna have to mix it up like I usually do and have a big mess. I can load this up for like doing windows with like a thousand nails. And so that's been, and then if I don't want them to fall out, we got that going on. So that's, that's been a nice attachment that I added to this thing after the big reveal. Actually, Jono has been using his uh, diamond back sack for something else. Yep. And um, let's see what we got in here. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the, so, the snack sack. Yes. <laughs> and it has nuts in it. So, I mean, you can probably gather what we're actually calling this thing. <laughs> But I'm not going to say it. You can't say no. that on YouTube. No. What well, do you want me to say? Nutsack? <laughs> Is that what you're getting me to say? Yeah. I ain't going to say nutsack on YouTube, but I won't say it. Don't get me to say it. We're at the last window here, this little triangle. And we framed this thing perfect, didn't we, Ray? Oh, yeah. Um, meaning that the, the bottoms of these line up perfectly, or excuse me, the tops of this line up perfectly with the tops of those windows in the framing. But... These windows were not quite as tall as they said they're gonna be. These things are like 59 and a half inches to here instead of 60, okay? So in essence, this plain line, when it planes out here now, 
is low. So we have to cut this sill out, drop this whole thing in order for all these windows to line up perfectly on outsides. And we don't have to do this, but it's gonna look real crappy if the trim like jogs or something, you know, as it goes up here. Yeah. So we framed it perfect, but I've never done a set of windows like this where you had a big package of windows with weird shapes. What's up, Jonah? <laughs> <laughs> he just popped out Hi. of nowhere. <laughs> that it just worked out because there's always some factor that you didn't think of. Like the window wasn't the size it said it was going to be. So. I think we need a bigger sawzall blade. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a pro tip to knock these nails flat. Even if you think, oh, I'm going to grab that as soon as I get down on the ground. I've stepped on one of these before and, you know, it goes right through your foot. So, pro tip is just do it right away. And then... Send it. That was much better. <laughs> Got our sill out. We're gonna replace the sill with just a half inch piece of zip board. And then we'll pack out the bottom of that to give it, you know, some more rigidity. And that'll give us an inch drop. And we may have to drop these as well. We'll just see. <laughs> we couldn't figure out. Oh, does that look right? Looks right to me. <laughs> All right, let's test it out and see if we dropped it enough or too much. Um, All right, yep, and we will need to pack out the top as you can see. All right, let's get her centered up, Ray. All right, we've achieved what we're looking for here, and I'm running this on the flange down to that other flange, and you can see that basically it lines up now which is what we're looking for, which is great. So now we're gonna have to actually pack up the top of this opening and bring it down an inch with something. I mean, I, I'd say it's, I'd say it's a good inch. For those of you that are very observant, you might be wondering why we didn't just shove these windows up to make the top plane out with our existing opening up there. And the reason is we needed the bottom to plane out with the bottom of this center window. And there wasn't much play at all in, in any of these openings either. So that was the reason if you're wondering. Up next, we got going installing this drainable house wrap by Benjamin Obdyke over our zip wall sheathing. And you don't have to do this with zip sheathing. The reason we're doing it is that we're gonna be filming some installation videos with LP SmartSide in the coming days, and they can't have their competitors' logos on their own website, so that's the reason. If you're looking for a really good drainable house wrap to put over, say, 7 16 OSB, I really like this Hydro Gap by Benjamin Obdyke, though. We do, Will. Bingo. All right. Hey, and they say guys are bad at wrapping Christmas presents. <laughs> yeah, Look what right. we got. Yeah. So hey, this is Will from from Benjamin Obdyke. Is that how you say it? Dude, that's correct. Benjamin. So. We called it. Uh, we had a bunch of different names for it. Okay. <laughs> hey, so we do drainable house wraps, uh, rain screens. Uh, the we actually just came out with the first ever self-adhered drainable house wrap on the market today. Uh, so pretty cool stuff. So instead of blue dots, it's actually pink dots. Okay. Uh, so definitely something to check out. Would you want to use a broom to install that? Or so not? actually, uh, <laughs> on our Hydrograp SA in the install guide, uh, we call out using a push broom to apply pressure. Okay. So yeah, you know, Arlo, Arlo he's a step ahead. <laughs> <laughs> So Jamie and Arlo have been here since eight in the morning, masterminding <laughs> mm -hmm. the start of the siding with this band board that they've created. Yep. Against my better judgment, I'm gonna let Jamie tell you guys all about it. All Remember, right. 
I can cut you off though. All right, have a seat, get some popcorn, get a drink, get comfy. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so we had a problem we had to solve. We need to have a full row of siding on the front of the house. Yep. And we'd love to start with a full row of siding on the deck. Above the and deck. And so those two things were incongruent. It wasn't gonna work out. And to, to remedy the problem, we designed this band board that's taller than a standard band board. Okay. So that Standard was 11 and a quarter. 11 and a quarter. We stretched this out to 14 and a quarter so that we could have a full piece of siding here, full piece of siding here. And not only does it solve the problem, it, it has to look good, which I think this does and mm -hmm. it will when it's painted. Uh, it's gonna be made of pressure treated wood and uh, this LP smart side band board. Yep. Now we have a piece of flashing that's gonna sit on top and cap it right there. That's gonna be beautiful and it's gonna serve a nice purpose. Uh, keeping the water pitching out. The corner board will come down and actually it's not gonna butt tight. That's a bad thing. You actually leave a gap on purpose. Uh -huh. Quarter inch yep. minimum. Yep. Next. And this is pitched as well. Yep. It's all ripped and show the end profile there so they can get the idea of the rips. That is all ripped so that water can shed out. Yep. And, and also one more thing. Okay. Uh, the homeowner said, hey, I think I might want to add stone to the foundation. And you know, we, we've got a nice thickness here that a stone could die out up into the bottom of this. And uh, we got three inches about. Yep, yeah. That's about right. That'll give plenty of room for that. It'll look good. It'll do what it's supposed to do. And the stone won't stick out past the front of the siding because that would look goofy, I think. So all the surfaces that contact here will be glued, nailed, screwed, and then painted. Let's talk about this trim and the window. It's very tempting to put the trim as tight as you can to show that you did a good job, right? Yeah. Wrong. Not what you do. What you need to do is leave about an eighth of an inch. I would say that's the minimum an eighth of an inch. Now that allows for a little bit of expansion contraction on the window, although I don't think that's a huge concern. The biggest concern for me is having a place to put the sealant. That'll keep water from getting in behind your trim in between the window and the trim. If you just do it on the face, you know, you could caulk that, but then all your caulk goes out on the face of your piece of trim. And who wants that? I don't want that on my house. So uh, gap, good place for sealant, no problem. Everything's good. What I'm going to do now is go around the entire house measuring each window and then oversizing my dimensions by an eighth inch on every side, so a quarter in both directions. And I can go back to the shop and make these precisely. Come out here, hang them in one piece, and it'll save a lot of rigmarole and a lot of fiddle farting around with trying to get one piece uh, nailed in in the right spot. Because to do this in individual pieces, what you would do is you'd measure the, the length and then you would add like a 16th or an eighth and then an eighth. And then you would try to hold it here an eighth of an inch away from the window. And you would try to hold it down by an eighth of an inch. And it's just a lot of struggle. So I try to eliminate struggle anytime I get an opportunity. And that's what I'm gonna do by making these in one piece. He's coming to get you, Arlo. Hey, he's coming. Probably going. Jono, check this guy out. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> Like Jamie said, doing a project like this is much faster and easier in a full-blown woodworking shop, which we actually have in Jamie's basement, so that's why they're doing this project there. One specialty tool they're using to make these joints strong is a domino tool, and this is made by Festool, and it's similar to the way a biscuit joint works, only the biscuits in this case are shaped like a domino. So this thing drills a domino-shaped hole to accept these domino-shaped biscuits that make the joints extremely strong, when used in combination with some wood glue. We're putting the dominoes in here. What I like to do is put a healthy amount of glue down in the hole, kind of swirl it around with a cheap little brush, and then we'll bop in these uh, the dominoes here. There's some squeeze out for you. And uh, that's all good, because what we do is take that with a brush, and then we just spread it all around over the part that's sticking out there. And uh, that's that's plenty of glue there, right? Good job, buddy. Said you like a lot of glue. I, I do. I love glue. A little squeeze out, never hurt nothing. One tool they're using that is not a specialty tool at all are these ratchet straps. And you can buy these at any automotive store. They're using them as the clamp to hold these window frames tight while the glue dries. These ratchet straps actually work really well for this application because they apply even pressure and they don't tend to roll the top and bottom pieces towards the bar of the clamp like it would on a bar clamp. Hey, thanks for building with us today. We really appreciate it and hope you've enjoyed it and learned something new. And if you've been enjoying our channel for a long time or just a short time and want a way to contribute, check out our new Super Thanks tab just below this video. It's a way for you to give a one-time small gift to help support our channel. Thanks. What? <laughs>
what? Ah, uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Hard. Hard. Scientists took a plumb bob like this, okay? Yes, sir. And they held it up next to the side of a giant mountain. And the mountain had gravity because of its mass, and it actually made the plumb bob pull slightly towards the mountain. Towards the mountain? And, and not be perfectly straight down anymore. Fact or fiction? Fiction. Fact. It would go, it goes away from it. You ever seen anybody skydive off a mountain? They go like this. <laughs>